smile just shows off your personality it just all forms together to make the amazing person that you are now, I wouldn't listen to anyone I mean they don't know you they're probably a really small person probably somebody struggling with their own stuff and so they're just kind of putting that stuff out there to try and make themselves feel better Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, it's okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. No, it's okay. Just... It's okay. Just let it go. Oh, it sets me to see you like this. You really don't deserve Your lips look a little you want, Are you thirsty? Do you... Yeah, you'd like some water? Okay, I think I have a glass here. We'll fill that up for you. There's some water, so I'll pour you some water. Do I have that open? It doesn't feel like it's I feel like it was pouring out. me unique, you know? No, it's just like you. I just think there are so many unique personalities and people in this world, and we all have something different to offer. We're all completely unique, both in the way we look and the talents we have and the way we act and how we relate to each other. And I just think we can really learn from anyone, you know? Well, I mean, you look at, you know, Stephen Hawking, not the most uh, intimidating in a physical sense, but intellectually, be hard to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone, you know? Like that. Yeah. 
Yeah, knowing you, like, that you're such an intelligent person, you have such brightness and just, you know, your own unique qualities. It's you being you that makes you special, not anything like that, but and your body is a physical manifestation of that. I'm not saying that to say, like, oh, you know, you're ugly, but, you know, at least you have these other things. No, I'm saying, like, our body is our physical manifestation of who we are, and this is how we get to choose to present ourselves, and so... Yeah, and so, you know, part of your experiences, they do get worn on the outside, but that's okay. Like, I just think there's so much we can learn and experience from other people in the world. Yeah, no, I just, I mean, I think the biggest thing is just to take it in context. And I don't mean to say in the context of you, you know, presenting yourself out in public. I mean, in the context that it would be for that person's life. Like, really, you probably not having the best life if you're going around on the internet trying to make other people feel bad and just saying nasty things to them. So, I don't know. I, I know how it is, though, because I am the worst at taking my own advice. I stew and stew over things that people say, but I know it's hard not to. The human brain is wired to really respond to negativity because we see it as a threat to our survival. Whereas the positive messages, it's kind of like, oh, well, if I don't perceive that positive message, I'll probably still survive, so it's not quite as inbuilt. Yeah, I know. No, but that's like, I think, all shapes and sizes, and you never really know what somebody else is going through, or why they are how they are, or what choices that they've made. Yeah, I don't think it matters, you know. Fat, skinny, big, small. I, you know, different cultures have different standards as well. That's one of the things that really kind of shook my world, but in a really good way, I think in my 20s. I was just realizing that all around the world, they're what would be considered the most attractive person, would not even necessarily be considered attractive in another certain culture. So a lot of our biases about, oh, this is, you know, what it is to be pretty, this is what it is to be attractive, well, a lot of that is just our culture, and so that's programming, it's not... But it's social programming, not actually physical programming, so it's nothing physically about a particular way of being that makes it ideal for a mate or something like that. It's a sexual selection thing that's happening based on culture and status within our culture. wonder who's zooming around right now. Yeah. Could be a good looking bike. <laughs> no, I know, but isn't that crazy? So, even something as simple as if you actually think, um, another thing I came across is that across time and space, uh, the beauty standards change, which I mean, we obviously know with the obsession with hair removal, well, 50 years ago, um, women were not removing pubic hair in the same numbers as they are today. Hmm. I just poured water down my front. But, you know? <laughs> no, honestly, I didn't do it on purpose. 
I wasn't even trying to make you laugh. Yeah, no, I'm just a klutz. <laughs> no, well, it's better to see you laughing now. Much, much better. No, because one of the things that I heard was basically back in the day, uh, it used to be kind of the curvier women were considered more like really, you know, kind of curvy with a bit of meat on the bones was considered more attractive. And that was because attraction was considered as a more tactile experience rather than a visual experience. And so tactilely, having a little bit of not just bones sticking out, feels nicer to the hand, and so that was considered more attractive, whereas uh, obviously in our day we're super image obsessed with what you look like in a particular image rather than thinking about a tactile experience because we have so many images all around us because of, you know, phones and media and everything like that. But it's important, I guess, to keep that context in mind is that you know, when somebody says something like that, they're coming from a very narrow history of time that's very narrow to our particular point in time, and that it's, I don't know, I, to me, it just doesn't matter that much. You know? Yeah, no, just... I think there are all sorts of ways to be beautiful and attractive and that if there is a person out there, there is somebody who is attracted to that very particular way that that person is. And I know it's not always about attraction and attracting a mate even, it's about social acceptance because I mean, we only really mate with very few people, and so I think, you know, for people who cannot attract a mate, it's probably a bit of a concern, but I know you've never had issues with that, so I know it's more about social acceptance and thinking, okay, or, you know, people thinking that there's something wrong with you, or, I mean, just having people being mean to you, but thing I always remember as well is, you know, if you think of, right now, if I just ask you, okay, who do you think the most beautiful person in the world is? And, you know, people might say Angelo, Angelina Jolie or someone like that, but that person, whoever it is, you know, if it is Jolie or if it's someone else, they will have copped way more of those type of comments than you have. Just the greater availability of someone just makes it easier for people to say things about them like that. And it doesn't matter how many millions of people think you're the most beautiful person in the world, there's always going to be somebody who doesn't like it, who's not a fan, who thinks you know, but who cares? Like, does it really matter? But it doesn't matter. I mean, to me, it doesn't matter if it's, I was going to say the president, but that's not really relevant anymore. Uh, you know, is it Brad Pitt or, you know, whoever? It doesn't matter who, like, or Angelina Jolie herself. It doesn't matter what that person thinks. What matters is what you think when you look in the mirror. As long as you're happy with who you are, and I think a lot of happiness with looking at yourself in the mirror has a lot more to do with what you do than how you look. And also, I'm thinking now about posture as well, you know, standing in a powerful position. 
much more empowering. When people respond to strong body language. For sure. Now, I was one time doing this, uh, I was reading this book about charisma, and one of the things they talk about is power, and how that's a component of charisma is power and warmth. I know, but anyway, I haven't told you this part. So then, in the book, uh, she was talking about, you know, different ways to try and increase your power. And one of the ones she said was to walk down the street, kind of like you're like a gorilla charging through the jungle, like the alpha gorilla. And I did that a little bit, and it felt so weird. Like, I was basically just swinging my arms a little bit more vigorously. But it felt so like, oh my god, am I allowed to do this? Like, this is really weird. And it was really eye-opening to me how regulated my own body language is by my social expectations. Anyway, so, um... One of the classic power poses, you know, is hands on hips with your elbows out, kind of a power ranger stance. So, sometimes what I'll do is I will stand with my hands, well, if I'm walking down the street, um, if I want to really put myself out of my comfort zone, I will put my hands on my hips and walk down the street. And what's really funny is that people make way for you. Like, I've spent so long kind of being the person who sidles side to side to kind of squeeze through so you don't have to touch someone as you're walking by. And then I notice, I'm like, oh, when I'm putting my hands on my hips, people then just move aside for me. I was like, oh, that's really weird. So that's what I always notice is now my, my inclination is always to kind of scrunch in when I'm approaching someone and they're coming closer to me. So now I always think, okay, no. Fluff out, be a big, kind of like a, a bird fluffing its feathers. Just, okay, fluff out, time to be bigger. So then when I walk past, people will move out of my way. So it's actually really funny how well that works. But I tell you, and people really like strong body language. People react so much to strong body language. Which is why, uh, why I think you're, uh, so popular. <laughs> Which isn't to say we couldn't all use a little help on our posture and all that. No, but that's what I think. I think focus in our society on going on a diet and uh, losing weight and doing all this is a bit counterproductive. I mean, how long have we seen this obsession? I feel like the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, we've had this obsession, and yet obesity is growing and growing. So obviously that is not the answer. I also saw an interesting study that showed I don't really know I didn't I don't know how it was done so I can't actually vouch for you know the methodology and everything like this but I thought it was a really interesting study and it said that uh, so people from the 1970s were compared to I think people in the 2000s and so it was like a woman of the same age, like in her 20s or 30s, who ate the same number of calories and did the same amount of exercise in 1970 would weigh less than an American woman in the 2000s. And so obviously something's happening there. It could be hormones in the food. That's be a massive, massive thing. 
or I mean, who even knows, but... So... That whole narrative of laziness and everything like that. And the thing is, there are societies that do that with being too skinny as well. A lot of men feel like they're too skinny. Yeah, and it's like... Can we just let people be... Just let them be, and they'll be okay, you know? whatever them and their doctor figure out. Not that I think, I don't think doctors should be fat shaming either, but anyway. I just don't think it's effective, first of all. Yeah. No, and that's like, it makes me think of my best friend's mom. And... She thought she was a bit overweight at the time when I was knowing her. And to me, she always just seemed perfect. She was my mitera, and she would, you know, I just love to hug her. She was perfect hug. She was shorter than me, and her head used to come up to here and hold her around. But she was just a wonderful woman to hug, and just so maternal and just lovely. She still is lovely. I just haven't seen her for a long time, but... Yeah. So you... Doing a little better? Getting... I didn't mean to bring it back up. Sorry. Um, Mom's more. Nothing more. I just want you to know that I think you're beautiful, I think you're amazing, and there are always going to be haters in the world, and don't, you know, haters are going to hate. That's just a fact. It has nothing to do with you and how amazing you are. Oh. I just think you're, you're quite special. So good to be close to you. No, I'm so glad you're my friend. I'm so lucky to have you as a friend. Okay, well, you wanna go watch some Netflix? Chill. Yeah, I actually have some brownies in the oven if you want some brownies. Let, yes, definitely, let's watch that. Oh, man. <laughs> I can't wait. If you're still awake, thank you for watching this video. Hit the subscribe button down below so that you can be the first to see tomorrow's ASMR video. Just for you. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked this video so that you can come back and watch it again and again and again. And be sure to comment down below for your chance to be featured in my monthly viewers appreciation video on the 25th. You can comment about this video or you could comment about a problem you're having in your life. I just want to hear from you. I do reply to all genuine comments, so I look forward to chatting with you down in the comments.